that's tangerine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's coconut. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's kiwi. And they're all yummy. You're listening to the AVIT Amplifier. Each week, we'll feature voices and ideas that need to be amplified in the higher education and pro-AV IT communities. This show is brought to you by higheredav.com. And now here's your host, Ryan Gray. Well, hello again, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and refreshing your feed on Wednesday. Uh, You know that we will be here with content for you. And again, today is no exception as we are back for a second week with um, with uh, uh, my boss's boss's boss, Dr. Lisa Rhine of Yavapai College. Uh, would you mind quickly reminding everybody uh, who you are and what you do? Yes, I'm Lisa Rhine, and I'm the president of Yavapai College, just finishing my sixth year in the role. Okay. So um, thank you for coming back for week two. I have some very hard-hitting questions to go through. This is where the journalism part really gets going. Okay. Um, I'm borrowing this question from... Um, uh, one of our uh, one of our favorite uh, people in the uh, interviewers out there, uh, Stephen Colbert, Dr. Lisa Rhine, great president or greatest president? Ooh, I'd say great president. All right, why why only great president? Ah, that's a great question. It's okay. <laughs> why only great? Um, I'm just sure that there's someone that could. Always do it bigger and better. Mm-hmm. And there's always somewhere to go. There's you know what I'm saying? There's always, the, right. there's always another step to take. Eventually, maybe I could become the greatest president. But right now, I'd say I'm a great president. And if you were, how would you ever know? You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, there's right? no other. Yeah. Yeah. What's the. You could the go down a rabbit hole. Like, how would I. Yeah. You know, how would I ever know I'm the great? Why do I need to be the greatest? What's the value in. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. All right. We go down. This brings up one other thing, which is. Um, and you could tell me if you would agree with this or not, because maybe I've been doing this wrong this whole time, which is um, everyone has the annual evaluation process and you get a number and there are people who go like, this person's good, fives across the board, right? And when I do these things, I usually, even for an, some of the best people, maybe one or two, if I'm giving the five, I'm saying, I don't think there's any anywhere else to go in this area. And I think that leaves more room for people to think about where they're going rather than stay where they are. Am I doing that right or am I doing that wrong? No, I think you're doing that right. I think that, you know, performance evaluation is, is kind of a dirty word, right? And I, I, I don't like the fact that we tie it to performance increase, mm-hmm. to dollars. Yeah. Uh, because I think it should be developmental. Yeah. I think everyone has places where they can learn and grow and be better Mm -hmm. every day, right? Like, so just trying to be better than the day before and not comparing you to anyone else, just to you. Yeah. And so, yeah, I I wish it was more of a developmental process Mm -hmm. that people could really use to, to grow as an individual and as a professional and not have it as kind of this Got to get all five so I get yeah. raised kind of thing. Hang over your head and do that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I think some of the work that we're doing here in terms of um, leadership development and some of those things, I think we're going to see new and other ideas. And yeah, in our work, like the, the, the performance evaluation is the piece of paper or now virtual paper that gets that has to get filed every year, you know. Uh, uh, growth is an ongoing thing for everybody, right? The growth is a goal setting and development. And even like you mentioned, you know, a, a, a capital improvement plan, there's human improvement plan. What does this look like? Where do you want to get to? And we're doing that all the time. So yeah. that's what I says. We, we have to turn this thing in and we, we want there to be this record of what we've done, but it's an everyday thing. It's an every week. It's every month thing we're doing, not a once a year thing. So. Yeah, and with the vice presidents who I supervise, that that's exactly the way I deal with it. I think the form is one thing. I never sit down and go through the form with them. We yeah. sit down and we have a conversation yeah. about exactly. their learning, growth, and development, and, and what they need, what resources they need, what obstacles and challenges can I help them with so that they can be successful. Mm-hmm. I see my job as removing those obstacles so yeah. that they can do their work. Uh, and that is more helpful to them and to me and to the organization than any rating scale or 
form the rubric. Complete. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we dive deeper into that and let's talk about all the things that Clint, you're having to coach Clint Ewell on right <laughs> now. And no, all right. I, I thought I had to try, you know what I'm saying? You never know. Yeah. I gather. Like, okay. Do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Oh, absolutely. An extrovert. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the Myers-Briggs and all of that. I, I had like top score, like 36. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I am extrovert all the way. I get all my energy from people mm-hmm. and yeah. Uh, my husband though, on the other side of that is an introvert. And mm-hmm. so when we go to a party, yeah. uh, when we get home and we're kind of debriefing on the party, I'll say, oh, I'm so bummed that I didn't get to talk to Susan and John. Mm-hmm. I talked to everyone else, but I never got to Susan and John because I want to get to everybody. Yeah. And my husband will find one or two people and stand in the corner and talk to those two people the entire night mm-hmm. and be totally happy with mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But we just have very different way of interacting and relating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know your Do you know your Myers Briggs in your head? Yes. What is it? Do you mind? <laughs> I'll tell. I'll t- I'll I'll go first if you want to. I'm an ENFP. You're an E N F P. Really. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I keep, there's parts of it I disagree with, but I keep coming back around and it always comes out the same way. I am an ENTJ. TJ. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that makes sense. Does that surprise you? No, 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 no. I think that's right. Like God, I would do, I would do a whole series on people talking about their Myers-Briggs and that, I think that's the, like. <laughs> it's fascinating. Oh, it's it? the, just the entire key to under like, anyways, the human decision-making involves all that stuff and really not much else, but yeah. So, um, uh, being an extrovert, do you, so relating to me, to, IT people are in technology is far more introverts than extroverts. Right. A lot of people that are very comfortable behind a screen, cranking out good work. And I always talk, refer to myself as a, one of the token extroverts of technology because someone's got to get out there and talk to other people. Do you feel like the role of a college president has so much outward facing thing that that you almost have to be an extrovert or have you seen colleagues that you would say, no, I know that's an introvert and they are also executing those things in their own way. I think, and I have thought about this. I think extroverts have an easier job being a president. I Mm -hmm. think that the work come become comes easier to an extrovert. I think, and I do know successful introvert presidents, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more painful mm-hmm. for them yeah, uh, because they need more alone time uh, to recharge and do all of those things. The job requires just an extraordinary amount of interaction and relationship mm-hmm. building, period. And you're out all the time and on 100% of the time. And so... You know, you have to go in and work the room. You have to talk to everyone. You yeah. have to get out in community. You have to do all the welcome speeches for every event. Mm-hmm. You have, you know, it's uh, it's just a very relational, people-facing mm-hmm. responsibility. And I think it would be exhausting to an internet to an introvert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody who you, people develop all sorts of ways of coping and dealing with that. But yeah, that. That certainly is that way. So then do you then if you're when you're assembling people around you, do you need, you know, vice presidents or people around you that are introverts to balance your extroversion? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I've been told I'm a little much. Right? You're, you're, you're a little much. <laughs> I've, you know? I've never heard anybody <laughs> say that. I don't know what you're talking about. And I, I but I think it's you know, I get my energy that way, right? So if I'm out all day and I'm meeting with people, I'm talking to you, mm-hmm. I'm out talking to students, I mean, I'm just energized at the end yeah. of the day. I'm not tired. I'm yeah. ready to go out and go to do the next thing, yeah. right? What's the next event? And um, so sometimes that balance is critical because I need to be reminded, like, okay, we all need a, a day off, Lisa. Like, we can't go yeah. and do this thing on Saturday with a you. Yeah. Right. Like, so uh, we're so glad you'll be there to represent. And yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. So, all right. Well, that's good to know. Like you, you, there has to be room for people to roll at their own pace and you don't, you know, not making people do your, yeah. I do that every once in a while. I'm like, Hey, there's this thing. We're all going to go to it. And you can see them just going like, no, I don't want to go to that thing. I'm like, how do you not? Oh, that's right. I'm the weirdo of the group. Yeah. Got it. 
Thank you. Okay. Um, what was your first job? My very first job. Well, besides the, you know, young age babysitting kinds yep. of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, my first uh, real official, like get paid by the man mm -hmm. job uh, was working at a restaurant called Jed's Steak and Ribs. Ooh. And it was walking distance from my home. And I was 16. Mm -hmm. And I got a job there, initially bussing tables and then eventually waitressing. And yeah, that that was it. Jed's Steak and Ribs. And how were Jed's Steak and Ribs? Were they good? Eh, They're all mediocre. Right. All right. So you have to make up with it, make up for that with customer service over there? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Had a lot of repeat offenders come yeah. in and, and a lot of regulars. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was kind of a kind of a hole in the wall little place uh, in Ohio. And, but that's where, that's where that's I got where my was. first paycheck. Yeah. So what do you, what lessons from that job do you still carry today? I still have server dreams, uh, you know, yeah. like, oh my gosh, I got to bring the side of ranch to mm -hmm. table 14, <laughs> you know, uh, or I actually have had, you know, I, I worked in the multiple server roles, uh, went from Jed's steak and ribs to working at a Marriott, and uh, full time while I was in school, and that was w the one that generates the most dreams. I, I dream that I'm in a hotel, and that the my tables are on multiple floors, and I'm running <sighs> up and down, serving these tables, mm -hmm. and I'm forgetting this person's drinks, and I get this wrong, and I spill the tray, and all of the nightmares. Yeah, but, yeah. But I think what I learned from that, you know, it multitasking, right? Keeping a lot of information in your head and. But also relating to people, making people happy, trying to read uh, customers' wants, desires, and try to meet those, representing the good mm -hmm. face of the company, and making it a place where the experience they had was was nice it's and good. enjoyable, yeah. and that they were going to come back. It's and so pleasing the customer was important. That's cool. Yeah, we should. So now you don't have to answer this. This is a joke question. But what, what, what do you think the nightmare about trying to solve problems on multiple floors means for a college <laughs> president? <laughs> we could dissect that we one. Could. Like how many layers of stuff is going on all the time? And I got to be on every floor taking care of everything. Doesn't anybody else work at this hotel? <laughs> it kind of cracks I me up. I thought of that. But great, great analogy. Oh, yeah. I, I'll, I, I am the best uh, amateur incompetent psychiatrist that ever <laughs> has, that anyone has ever, uh, come. Cool. What, what's the best gift you've ever been given? Hmm. The best gift. Uh, well, I'd probably say my children. Yeah. I mean, hands down first. And then honestly, and this is not f because I think the board might hear it, but just the opportunity to sit in this seat and to lead this organization. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for it every single day. Yeah. That's a good place to be though, to feel that about, you know, what you're doing day in and day out to have a, a daily sense of gratitude changes how you approach things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Attitude of gratitude, right? <laughs> uh, no, I think it's critical. And I think gratitude begets gratitude and gracious things. And so what you put out there, you get. And karma's real. And so mm -hmm. I do feel like uh, just starting the day with a sense of gratitude really sets the day off in the right direction. Is there anything you do in particular? Like, is there a, an activity or something you do that to, to remind yourself of that? Or is it just something that, you know, is permeated, you know, how you, how you approach your day? So just words of affirmation. I mean, I does, I actually say, you know, I'm grateful, thankful, and blessed when yeah. I go to bed and when I wake up every single day. It, and it, 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 ever since I started doing that, it's been, life's been great. Life's yeah. been better. I think it's all about uh, setting those intentions and trying to get rid of the negativity or the other things that hold us back in our own minds. Mm-hmm. And just starting out with a clean slate of gratitude, grateful, thankful, blessed, really sets you off in a way that will bring more of that for that day. Yeah. Some of the, some of the, the there's like the studies on that now is like, just like you said, someone who once or twice a day repeats a mantra 
both how it changes their brain chemistry and then how it changes the outcome of things. Like it's, it's a, like, it's a measurable real thing. It's not, Oh, I do it. It makes me feel different. Like it literally changes things going on in your brain so that you approach life differently. So I totally agree with that. And the yeah. way in the words that you say to yourself oh. and all of those things, I mean, you, you don't say I have to go to work. You say I get to go to work mm -hmm. it changes the whole way you look at that. Mm -hmm. Right. How many people would be just, overjoyed to be sitting in my seat. Right. <laughs> wow. And I get to do it. Think of the thing How I get to work I, on today. Right? Think of yes. what I'm hooked into. Like, what's the chance? What's the difference? All right. We could do that all day. We could. I'd love to talk about that. Cause that's, that's, a, yeah, there's a whole thing too. Even, even in the things you're like, God, that is not my favorite part. What's the part I can hook into. Right. What's the part I can say, well, I don't like this part. Like I can do something here that will make something a little bit better. That's the part I can hook into and run with it. So, And that's the power, and that's the thing we can control. Mm -hmm. So we should. Yeah. See? All right. Welcome to Modern Psychology <laughs> at Yavapai College. Okay. Uh, less serious question. What What is the best sandwich? Hmm. I kind of like a really good Reuben. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Reuben. Why? Ah, just the combo, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the thousand Island, the sauerkraut, the yeah, corn beef and just, mm. so the bread, yeah. the rye bread, you know, just the different flavors and the melding of that, the gooeyness, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and the, in the food where there's the, right, the, the salt, fat, acid, heat, a lot of it, sandwiches other than pickles don't have yeah. that acid side, but sauerkraut, sauerkraut, I would agree. There you go. Yeah. Andy, is there a place you like to get them or is that something you're like i know how to make it you know I, I do it my way or is there a place you go so i haven't found a place here mm -hmm. uh, that that has one that i that's better than the one i can make at home yeah i'm still looking for that that's all right you know what i'm saying but yeah we do them on the regular at home that's awesome mm -hmm. that's awesome do them on the blackstone all right. Do it on the grill. Do you, so now, do you run the Blackstone or does your husband run the Blackstone? Uh, we can kind of share that. That's awesome. Uh, he, d he does more the burger side, the yeah. steak side. But if we do something fancy schmancy like breakfast or sandwiches, I'll do that. That's cool. Do you, can you do the the chef thing where they flip the egg and it lands in their chef hat when no, you're out I on the Blackstone? Do no, I can't, I can't do that either. That either. I always want to be like, <laughs> let me... Yeah, do I'm not the, as coordinated yeah, to do that. I'm, yeah, exactly. I'd make a big mess yes. if I tried to. I'm a big Blackstone fan. All right, that's all right. That's cool. Um, is there anyone whose autograph you have that means something? Hmm. It's okay if not, because a lot of I people can't. don't. You know. Yeah, I don't. I have some autographs from folks that have written books and mm -hmm. things like that, or authors. Um, but I don't think there's any one that stands out in my mind as, like, if I lost that, I would right. you know, be devastated. Right. Well, then let me hook on to that, because one of the other questions, and I and sometimes I have to preface it for other people, that this is actually a question that if you live in our area, you have to be aware of. But, like, okay, uh, house fire, what do you have to make sure makes it out if you're having a house fire? So I would grab, and this is going to sound strange, maybe, but maybe not. Um, my father used to make figurines out of wood. So like he would mm -hmm. carve from a square piece of wood, yeah, figurines. Mm -hmm. And he did one that's probably, I don't know, maybe 14 inches tall of a fisherman mm -hmm. with the big net around and, and it's on my mantle. And it's the really the only thing I have from my father. Yeah. And so I would want if I, I, I would be devastated if I mm -hmm. lost that. That's a great. And that's besides my kids, you know, and my well, that's usually and the, the humans first. The but, people, the dogs, everybody. But yeah, besides yeah. the humans. Yeah. Is it, I would and, say, yeah, it, the statue of the fisherman that's on my mantle. And is is it because just because your dad made it, or be, is the fact that it is a fisherman? Does the fisherman tie back to something about him? Not necessarily. I mean, he did fish on occasion, uh, and I did that with him on occasion. But 
I just think it's the fact that he made that. Yeah. And I was always just in awe of that he could take a plain piece of wood and make it into something so beautiful and intricate. Mm -hmm. And so it represents my connection to him, I think. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love, yeah, the, something that their hands created is different than, yeah. Yeah, it's not something he bought me, it's something he made. Yeah. And it was in my, uh, my, family, my home growing up, uh, too, and so it represents all of that yeah. as well. But it's the one thing when he passed away that I, I had to have. Nice. Okay, so when they make the biographic movie of your life, who do you want to play you? Uh, probably Deborah Winger. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, I think that's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. I just always, I was like, wow, she's a lot like me. I mean, just the mm -hmm. way her temperament and her mannerisms and things. All right, good answer. Yeah. And what do you... I don't know if we're about the same age or not, but yeah, I think it oh, can work. Technology now, we can make anybody yeah, do true. anything, you that's know? True. What do you, soon you Put won't even... Put a filter need, on it, right? You'll just type in AI, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they'll just, they'll be a fake, you know. I don't know these people with their excitement about technology. They don't know what they're doing. That's a joke. Um, okay, so what do you think then should be the title of that film? Hmm. I would call it overcoming adversity. Nice. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Something so, along those lines. Nice. All right. So then that, this was not on my list, but it, <laughs> but it, but you, so you saying overcoming, like the follow up question is now, why don't you dive in and tell us about all of the <laughs> adversity you faced and all that? But I'll, I'll narrow it to one thing, which is, um, the first time, and I'm sure it's just because I was behind the times on it, but I heard somebody, you know, articulator say how the, the phrase Maslow before Bloom was in your first address to the college. And, and it really, it struck a chord with me so much. And you kind of talked about a little of your story of being a, you know, first generation college student and what, what that's meant. But would you, for people out there, the, the phrase Maslow before Bloom what does that mean and why is it important? Yeah, so, you know, Maslow uh, came out with the hierarchy of needs that starts with safety and security first and, and making sure all your psychological basic needs are met. And then Bloom came out with the taxonomy about how people learn. And it is impossible for a person who doesn't have the basic psychological needs met to expect that they're going to engage fully in this process of learning. Yeah. And our students come as whole people to the institution. They bring with them their desires and their dreams, but also their challenges and their fears and mm -hmm. their insecurities and their home life mm -hmm. and their past, their history. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand who our individual students are on the individual level and be able to make sure that as much as possible we're fulfilling their basic needs along with trying to mm -hmm. enhance their knowledge and learning. And so we can't, you can't separate those two. They're, they're intrinsically locked mm -hmm. and interconnected and complex. Uh, but I also have a, a, a mantra that, you know, we can't, higher education can't be a pathway out of poverty if we're not willing to help our students while they're in poverty. Yeah. And so that means attending to those things that are in Maslow's hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And th those are literally as basic as daily safety, Safe, food insecurity, food, and those shelter. sorts of things that... Yeah. Food, th shelter, safety, all of those really basic human needs that we all have. And uh, yeah, educators have to pick up where other places of society, like if, we, if we are going to be successful in the environment that we're in, you know, I, I, we go down a road on that about the arguments that I had about why, why we would, you know, serve free lunch at K-12 schools, like, and that, that's not your job, you're there to teach. How much do you think a kid who hasn't eaten all day is going to learn two plus two, you know, it's, yeah. you know, aside from being the right thing, it's necessary. Yeah, when we started talking about needs and securities and basic needs and securities of students in college, which probably happened about, became super popular around a decade ago, and, mm -hmm. and I remember an administrator saying, 
you know, we're not a social service agency. Right. It's mission drift, right? Mm-hmm. If we would do that. And I never believed that. Yeah. I always felt like it, we have a obligation to meet students where they are and bring them as far along as we can toward their goals. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that by just educating them alone. We have to support the whole person. Yeah. And now I think that that's been common. You know, Mm -hmm. like people talk about needs and securities and they're trying to figure out, we have food pantries, we have Mm -hmm. all kinds of resources that we surround our students with to ensure that they have the best shot at getting Mm -hmm. the education they need because education is the thing that changes lives. And yeah. you know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But well, again, that's a whole topic in and yeah, of itself too, but yeah, it's day. not, it's, <laughs> it's not a mission drift. It's a mission focus. It's, you can't, it, it's even uh, forget whether you think it's altruistic or nice or not. It is, it is Central. to the point of the thing that we are trying to do and ignore it at your own peril. You know yes. what I'm saying? Uh, you ignore it, we'll deal with it, and then let's compare our test scores at the end of the semester and see who does better. That's correct. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Very important question. Okay. And there's controversy and answers from people on this. Ready? Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Adele, or Beyonce? Adele. Why? I just love her voice. Sing every song. Yeah? Yeah. I'd love to see her. I heard that she had a uh, residency in Vegas for a while, but I don't know yeah. if that's anymore. I think it might have ended. So I may have missed my opportunity. Yeah, my easy she was close. Yeah. yeah, interesting. So, what uh, are do you like the? Um, not to pull one out, but is it the 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 ballad or the banger from her that is your favorite? I like the ballads. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> What's the next line? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Are you in the choir? Do you, want to, you do the rest <laughs> no, of it for us? That was good. No, 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 no. I'm not a singer. I just sing in the shower. That's awesome. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, she has that voice. Like you can't, you just can't look away. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yes. Just like, wow. Yeah. She blows you away with every song. Yeah. I wonder what it would take to get her into our performing arts center. Mm. More money than Moolah. we More. have. <laughs> I was going to say. For sure. Probably. Our entire annual budget for For the whole thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, one day we're going to have to do a full tear-out renovation, and we'll just be like, okay, we're spending the whole thing on one Adele concert. And Wouldn't that be awesome? shut the building down the rest of the... All right. Um, uh, okay, uh, last serious question, mm. which is, do you believe people are generally good with a proclivity for evil or generally evil with a proclivity for good? I think people are are generally good. I think that everyone is born good Mm -hmm. and things happen in their lives that, that can have them veer off that path. Um, but I always believe in redemption and second chances too. So yeah, I think you, you can always come back around to the good and there's good in everyone. So when going through life with that sort of feeling, does that change how you kind of either approach work or relationships? Like how do you apply that when you're, when you're uh, making decisions? I, you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. I think we need to give people uh, dignity and respect. And when an individual makes a misstep, you know, how they handle that misstep is key. Uh, but if they're willing to say, wow, I made a mistake and uh, I, I won't do it again and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to be better tomorrow, we need to give them that opportunity to be better tomorrow. Yeah. So I do believe in second chances. You know, we are getting ready to embark on a uh, prison program, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to help individuals that are in prison go back to school and, and I truly believe that that's an important thing for education, mm-hmm. uh, educational institutions to do is to give people opportunity to redeem themselves and get back on track. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Second chances. Um, you saw, so for most people, the hardest person to kind of give that grace to is themselves. Are you able to look at yourself with that same? Uh, that same affordance for mistake as you're able to look at other people. I'm getting better at that. I think it's a, something that is super hard. I I used to be kind of a perfectionist and so really hard on myself when I wouldn't perform at the level of my own expectation. 
Uh, so just getting to the point to forgive myself for not meeting my own expectation, mm-hmm. which sounds so silly, uh, but it is a real thing. Fair. It's a real thing. So uh, not be as hard on myself. Uh, I have good friends that remind me of that. My husband reminds me of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that sometimes your best is, you know, really good enough. Yeah. No, it is. It's, yeah. it's such a thing in every, in everywhere people are is, is that the, your worst detractor is yourself and the, the way you let other people define what that is. It's so difficult yeah. to keep off of that track. So yeah. I, I just like the thought, like, whether you're the president of the college or any other place, that's a pretty universal challenge, I think, that most people deal with. Yeah. And one of my favorite sayings is, comparison is the thief of joy. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so just being comparing yourself to yourself. Yeah. Am I better today than I was yesterday? So, or is there an interaction that I could have, could have been better? What could yeah. I have done differently? And, and to try to have those impeccable interactions. So to bring it back to the beginning, it's okay to be a great president. You it's don't have to be the greatest you one. You don't have to be the greatest. Came all the way around it's to better it. than the day before. <laughs> all right, all right. So same last three questions for everybody, and they go kind of quick. Um, the the uh, first is, um, what is a question that you wish people would ask of you that nobody ever does? What's your favorite candy? Mm. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite candy? I like Jelly Bellies. Yeah. Why? I mean, there's only one right answer to why they're the best, but I'll see if you have it or no, not. No, I, I like them because you, it's, it's a surprise, right? You mm-hmm. take one and you go, oh, that's tangerine. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's coconut. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's kiwi. Yes. And so it's kind of a little game in the mouth, right? And, like uh, you get to identify each little Jelly Belly. Variety, surprise, and yeah. then, you know. I'm, and they're all yummy. Exactly. Well, it's, there's no, there's no, oh, they're there's all no great. Yeah, they're you know? all great. I like. I'm not a black licorice fan, but the, even the black licorice jelly bellies are good. They're not bad. I know. And then the other, like, sometimes you get the thing, and they'll have a little formula. Like, you want to make this, make it out of that. Like, boring. No. I would. I avant garde. <laughs> Give me three <laughs> random ones and see if I can make something weird out of that. That's a Agreed. great. All Agreed. right. That's a great answer. Well, I feel like now we're I'm going to be doing a budget request for <laughs> jelly. jelly. We should have Yavapai College branded we jelly. We should. Bill. All right. That's a good That's idea. a good idea. I'll let Clint know to buy that. I'm just, how many times am I going to mention him in this show? Okay. Second to last question would be, um, if anybody was sort of curious about the things that you've talked about or wanted to get in contact with you in any way or even wanted to learn more about Yavapai College itself, how would they go about doing that? Shoot me an email. Lisa.rhine at yc.edu. Nice. And visit www.yc.edu to learn about many things going on. And, you know. Uh, come visit. To, Take I a can't, tour. I can't even tell you how much everyone listening needs to come visit. We're it's, the best place to come see. And it's such a beautiful campus. Mm-hmm. When I got this job, I, I, I told my husband I walked out on the field and realized I was at the Super Bowl. Yeah. It is that beautiful. That's awesome. I love that's that's a great piece of imagery there. Yeah, that's cool. And plus, if you come visit us, we might take you to our uh, our wine tasting room that's just up the uh, mountain right there. Southwest Wine Center. That's right. Okay. Five stars all the way. All right. All right. Last question. Um, so uh, the old school newscasters used to have a sign off phrase for their you know good night and good luck or you know Saturday Night Live uh, weekend update people always had their you know their way they end their show so what would you say is uh, Dr. Lisa Rhines drop the mic sign off hmm. I'm going to steal it from the college and it's be more thank you for listening to the AVIT amplifier join us again for next week's episode when we'll welcome a new guest who you'll want to hear from we promise your host has been Ryan Gray He's on the tweeters at Ryan underscore A underscore Gray, or find him on LinkedIn to connect. Please subscribe and give the show a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. This show is brought to you by HigherEdAV.com. The views expressed here are not necessarily those of our respective institutions, employers, or sponsors. Everyone hang in there, go easy, and we'll be back next week.